Welcome back. Professor Dire Tladi has been nominated as South Africa's candidate to serve as a judge of the International Court of Justice, commonly known as the World Court, and sitting in The Hague in the Netherlands, it comprises 15 judges that are elected by the United Nations General Assembly and the Security Council for a nine-year term. How is he feeling ahead of the election, which is scheduled to take place in November this year? Well, Professor Tladi joins us for more on this. Thank you so much. Congratulations on your nomination and good luck for those elections. Uh, can you tell us how you're approaching the opportunity? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to talk to as many states um, as possible who will be voting. And um, the hope is to, to show them that uh, of the candidates that are out there, um, that I'm the most qualified. Um, yeah, that's pretty much how, how I'm approaching it, but also trying to do it in a in a climate friendly way. So trying to um, travel as little as possible unless it's to a, a place I was in any event going to. Hmm. What's the importance of the International Court of Justice, given that we're living in a time of renewed global conflict? Yeah, well, that I, I would think makes it even more important. I mean, the function of the court is to um, resolve disputes between states um, with a view to promoting um, the peaceful resolution of conflict and to, uh, as the Charter of the United Nations says, save succeeding generations from the scourge of war. Um, and so actually at a time in which there's so many disputes between states and so many tensions, um, it just simply makes the court all the much more important, I think. So South Africa is facing some of its own legal tensions, specifically over the BRICS summit to be held here in about a month, uh, and with the mm -hmm. pressure on South Africa to arrest uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin. Do you have a position on or a view on how South Africa should be approaching this legally? Yeah, I mean, I've been on, on um, uh, news shows uh, on this station and other stations, and I've shared my view on that. I think the, the law is very complicated, um, you know, and the law is not as easy as, as those that you speak to might say. Um, but certainly, I think for South Africa, what makes, what makes um, the options less, and therefore, in a sense, sort of the, the objective statement of law less important is um, the fact that we've already had a ruling by a Supreme Court of Appeal that makes it very clear what, in the Supreme Court of Appeal's view, the status of the law is on the basis of our own domestic law. So I think that sort of clarifies things in a sense for the state and reduces um, um, the options that are uh, um, um, uh, available to the state. How do you view South Africa's judicial system, given that you're, you're an expert in international law? And I think, you know, sometimes yeah. we look at what's happening overseas and think, well, you know, if, if we could aspire to that. But we have to look realistically at not only our own faults and our shortcomings, but the things that we are doing right. Yeah. In fact, um, South Africa's judicial system is pretty much... Uh, world-renowned. I think people, uh, you know, legal experts, particularly constitutional law experts, um, uh, look at our, our judicial system with envy. Um, we've had some rather um, uh, groundbreaking decisions. Um, so at least internationally, our, our, our judicial system is viewed um, uh, very favorably. Um, I mean, that's our judicial system. Uh, you, you can say something else about um, the other parts of our politics, but certainly our judicial system is, is, is held in very high regard. Talk to us a little bit about some of the you know, international law issues uh, currently making news that you're following with a very keen interest. Yeah. So obviously the first one is um, the one that you've mentioned, um, the question relating to the BRICS summit um, um, and the duty to arrest. As I said, I think the legal issues are a lot more complicated than um, is often made out. Um, my own view on, on the politics as far as that's concerned is that um, um, the Russian president will probably not come. Um, the other issue related to that is um, the very question of the, um, um, the invasion uh, by Russia of Ukraine. That raises different legal issues on sort of... Uh, you know whether or not the justification, the legal justifications that have been put forward um, by Russia are uh, are um, consistent with um, 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 with international law. I think these are the two big issues um, um, that I can think of. There are questions about immunity as well. So, so when we think about the Putin issue, we're talking about 
personal immunity, but there are also questions about immunity of, of, of states and their property and whether or not another state can sort of seize um, the property um, of another state. And uh, in fact, a, a case has been submitted uh, just recently at the International Court of Justice um, relating to um, the seizure of Iranian, um, Iranian assets by Canada, for example. Um, so there's a host of international law issues out there. Um, you know, there's a new treaty that's just been adopted on uh, biodiversity um, in areas beyond national jurisdiction, which also raises a number of interesting um, legal questions. Why do you think, I've, I've allowed us to go on a bit of a tangent here, but getting back to the position, uh, why do you think it is so important uh, for a South African to serve um, on this, you know, in this incredibly important uh, court? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess. So first of all, I should say I think it's it's. Um, uh, I think that South Africa has put forward, uh, you know, if I may say so, a a um, a good candidate, and I think that should be the first and primary reason. But it's it's also important because we 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 have never had a permanent judge on the court, and I think you know, I, I mean, it's been a long time that this court has been in existence, and and for there never to have been a South African judge, I think is uh, is uh, is almost a travesty. I mean, we're not the only ones, but I think it's it's a point worth making. Um, there's only been one judge from Southern Africa, you know, from the region in the history of this court. Um, so I think there are a lot of geopolitical reasons. Also, um, we have, um, you know, um, we have contributed a lot indirectly to the jurisprudence of the court, um, you know, with a number of, um, of decisions by the court relating to apartheid. So I think all of these reasons are, are important. And of course, I think we're a big player on the continent and it's good. Um, for us to be represented at some point. But the main thing, I think, is that we've never had a judge on the court. Hmm. So what role does lobbying play in, in, in terms of securing a position and, and how much yeah. is there left to still do? Unfortunately, it plays the bulk of the, the, the role, I think. Um, I mean, it, it really is about lobbying and uh, an election machinery. Um, as I said, you have to speak to as many states as possible. Uh, you know, I've had conversations with many states and they've said, look, we've seen your, your candidature. We think, you know, um, uh, um, as far as merit is concerned, we are, we're, we're very comfortable with you. But there are other things at play. And, and those other things, of course, are outside one's control. So um, it's, a, it's, a tough, it's a tough marathon. Um, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to it. In a sense, I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, but it's a tough marathon. And I'm ready. Well, we wish you all the luck in the world. It would be an honour for South Africa as well uh, to be represented there. Uh, thanks as well for speaking to us on South Africa tonight this evening. That was Professor Dira Tladi. He is South Africa's candidate to serve as a judge of the International Court of Justice.